Hello, Yellow Springs High School and McKinney Middle School. My name is Jack Hattert, the principal of the middle school and high school, and I would like to welcome you to the 2020-2021 school year. Much of what I'm covering in this video was also covered in the letter that was attached to the same one call. However, I'm going to go uh, much more deeply into detail um, in this video, and I'm also going to provide some, some timelines that were not included in the letter. Additionally, much of what's covered in this video would typically be covered at our open house. However, due to COVID, we are not going to be having a formal open house this year. We are hoping to still have a, a virtual open house where students will be able to get on and meet their teachers, um, but we are still working on details um, as far as if that's going to be able to, to happen. As I go through these changes, um, keep in mind that we will have a couple new team members helping as we work this year. The first one is Mr. Cameron Dickens. Mr. Dickens will be replacing Ms. Eastman as a seventh and eighth grade science teacher. Ms. O'Connor also um, moved back to South Carolina and Mr. Lighty will be moving from the high school down to teach seventh and eighth grade social studies. Ms. Weinstein will be moving from a part-time position to a full-time position as she keeps her U.S. history classes and then also picks up sections of AP U.S. history and government and economics. What will our approach look like this year? Um, a big change from the spring is that our students will be following their student schedules. So whatever students, whatever classes the students have scheduled will be the classes that they're taking this year. And those schedules will be coming out in a mailing that's going to um, be dropped in the mail on Wednesday of this week. So students should have their schedules on Thursday or Friday. The, the goal for us this year in our approach is that we want our instruction to be very engaging. And it's, it's a challenge because it's going to be virtual, but we still want students to be engaged. We want them to be thinking critically. We want them to be interacting with material that challenges um, previous understanding and learning um, and allows them or asks them to, to apply stuff in new ways. We want our learning to be rigorous, rigorous for all learners. So wherever students are, we want them to be challenged and pushed along. And then the um, third thing is, we want to balance that engaging instruction and rigorous instruction with limited screen time. So we understand that in a virtual setting, it's not realistic for students to be sitting in front of a computer for six, seven, eight hours a day, five days a week. So we are very mindful of that, and we are working to strategically um, incorporate activities that allow kids to continue to think and interact with material and learn and grow in ways that do not necessarily include sitting in front of a screen. As I go through this presentation, I'm going to talk a lot about synchronous instruction versus asynchronous instruction. Our goal to limit screen time is to have a balance between synchronous and asynchronous, meaning with synchronous instruction, the communication happens in real time. There will be scheduled times for some classes that you will have to be in those classes when they are scheduled. Other classes will meet asynchronously, just meaning that the communication will be posted in Aubre class and students will be able to access it, but they will not have to access it at a given time. So there's no live meeting with asynchronous. It will be the material will be posted, students will be able to work on it at their convenience, where synchronous instruction, the material um, will be distributed through an actual class meeting at a given time. This slide has a lot of words and um, graphics, and I'm going to talk through it here, and then I'm going to, I've got an additional slide that explains it in further detail. Um, our plan for this year includes continuing with our transition to a seven-period schedule. So before COVID hit, we had planned to move away from the A-B block schedule and go to a seven-period day anyway, and we are going to follow through with that even in the virtual setting. Another change is that our school day is actually going to start at 8.30 now um, instead of 8.45. So this still keeps us as one of the latest starting schools in the area, um, but we are going to um, honor that earlier start time. The calendars here show which classes are going to be synchronous or asynchronous. So when you look August 27th, our first day of school, there's an A. That means that all classes on August 27th will be synchronous meaning that students, unfortunately, on the first two days of school will be in front of their computer much of the day. Um, we're going to focus intentionally on building community and helping students understand what 
um, each class looks like in this virtual setting on August 27th and August 28th, where they have all of their classes synchronously. When you move down here to Monday, August 31st, we're going to start our rotation where now only the odd classes are held synchronously, but the even classes are asynchronous. And then on Tuesday, the even classes will be synchronous and the odd classes will be asynchronous. This graphic shows um, kind of in detail what the first couple of days of school look like and then what it looks like moving forward. So Thursday and Friday, August 27th, August 28th, the first two days of school, all classes are going to be meeting synchronously. So how will a student access their class? Um, the student will get up in the morning, get ready, eat breakfast, be ready for the day. At 8.30, they'll log into their Chromebook and they will open Aubre, which is our new learning management system that I'm going to talk about in a second. And in there, all of their classes will be loaded in automatically and they'll just click on their first period class. There will be a link in there for them to access their synchronous instruction, whether that be through Google Meet or through Zoom. At 925, they will switch over to a second period class that will also be synchronous. And then third period starts at 1020. Their fourth period class will start at 1150. Fifth period at 1245. Sixth period starts at 140. And seventh period starts at 235. So this is the, the schedule's all synchronous instruction for the first two days of school. Then when we come back on Monday, August 31st, this is where we begin our even and odd rotation. The first day of school will be, or this, this first Monday will be an odd day, meaning the odd classes meet synchronously. So a student will get up in the morning, they will um, open their Chromebook, and they will go to Aubrey. And in Aubrey, they will be able to access their link to their first period class, which will be synchronous instruction. That class will end at approximately 922. And then the second period class is asynchronous, meaning the student does not have any link to go to an actual class. They'll go into Aubrey, they'll open second period, they'll see what their task is for this asynchronous time, and they can complete the task during this 52 minute window. Or if they would rather complete this task in the evening or late at night, um, it's asynchronous instruction allowing them to complete the task at their convenience. Then at 1020, the student will need to return back to Ombre and they'll need to click on their third period class and they'll join synchronously. After this class, they eat lunch and then they have an asynchronous period after that. So their fourth period class um, will meet asynchronously. Fifth period, they're meeting again synchronously. Sixth period is asynchronous. And then seventh period, seventh period they are back to um, at least beginning class with a live meeting. Um, whether that again be through Google Meet or through Zoom, um, but they'll go to Ombre, they will click on the seventh period class, the link will be in there for them to, to join that meeting. Tuesday and all of the evening, even days following, their first period class is asynchronous. So they do not have any kind of live meeting or any obligation until 925 when, when a teacher will expect to see them in front of their computer to get this class started. If they want to get up early and do this asynchronous instruction ahead of time, they can. If they would, would rather sleep in a bit and tack this on to the end of the day, they can do that as well. Um, however, daily attendance will be taken on odd days. Daily attendance will be taken in their first period class. And daily attendance will be taken in their second period class on these even days. So it's important that students are in these synchronous classes when they're supposed to be in them. Um, just because these classes are synchronous does not necessarily mean that the student's going to be on a Zoom and in that class for the entire 52 minutes. The synchronous part may last 20 minutes, and then the students may be asked to collaboratively create their own Zoom and work with a small group for 20 minutes, um, or there may just be a task that they uh, can do aside from the computer, and then they join back into the Zoom maybe when there's 10 minutes left in class. So that may look different for all students in all classes um, as far as what the synchronous instruction looks like. So how do students access um, all of their classes? Uh, our school, we are switching K-12 over to a new learning management system called Aubrey. And Aubrey 
um, is very similar in use to Google Classroom and form and function. So students, um, when they access it, it's very intuitive. They'll be able to find their classes very easily. Um, but Aubrey also has a parent portal that is much more user friendly than Google Classroom. And so parents will be able to see all the um, content material that students should be working through. And it's also going to include all of the grades. So normally parents or typically parents would have to go to Google Classroom and they would have to go to Progress Book. Aubrey now puts all of that in one spot for parents. Um, this also allows students and parents to see um, all of our daily announcements. So any announcements that typically would be read over the announcements here at school will now be typed in there and students and parents can see that daily. Uh, student accounts are disabled until we'll probably turn them on on uh, maybe the 26th so students can start getting acquainted with Aubrey. And I'm also going to be sending out a link that has a tutorial for students and families to understand how Aubrey works ahead of time. Um, but that first day of school, when you wake up in the morning on August 27th and you're trying to figure out how do I go to school today, it's going to be as easy as you opening your Chromebook, going to yschools.aubrey.io, and you're going to log in with your Google account. And with that Google account, you will then go into your first period class, click on the link, and your school day will be started. An important change um, during this pandemic, the Ohio Department of Education has given school districts a little bit of freedom in how we calculate daily attendance um, or how we calculate attendance. Uh, in general, attendance can now be taken in two different ways, either through presence in these online meetings and synchronous instruction or by completing work. So students can actually get credit for being at school as long as they're doing their work. Um, which is what we'll be using with our asynchronous instruction. So just a couple of details that I want to share. Daily attendance, like I said, will be taken during the first synchronous class each day. So on odd days, daily attendance will come from that first period class. On even days, daily attendance will uh, come from the second period class. Period attendance will be taken in each synchronous class. So if you if a student gets on and they um, are their first period class, we, they, we mark them as present for the day. But then they also have to be in their third, fifth, and seventh period classes to remain marked as present. If they miss um, a synchronous class, or they don't show up to a synchronous class, their attendance status changes to absent. Any student who will be missing class, we encourage the family to call the office just as you have in the past. And if you go to a dentist appointment or a doctor appointment, and um, you would get a doctor's note, please still do that. Um, we will um, work with you to get that digitally instead of you having to actually physically bring it into the office. But kind of all the same practices that we've known around attendance and getting absences excused, we should do those same things. As I mentioned, attendance for asynchronous classes will be based on the completion of work. So as long as students are doing the work from those asynchronous classes, um, it is assumed that they are present. So if they want to do that work during that normally scheduled asynchronous class and really contain their school day to 8.30 to 3.30, they can absolutely do that. If they choose to do that asynchronous instruction outside of the school day, that's their choice. And as long as they are getting the work done, they are considered present. Um, and then if your family or your student has a special circumstance impacting the attendance, please just give me a call. Um, I'm glad to, to talk through and work through. Um, as I said, we have a little bit more space from the Ohio Department of Education and how we do attendance now. Um, so I would certainly be glad to talk through that with your family and how we can come to a solution that works and supports your needs. The final thing is, I just want us to have a great year. Um, this is gonna be a new, um, new endeavor for all of us. And um, I encourage you to, to support the school, to support the teachers, to support your students, um, and, and give us some grace. And we're going to give you that same patience and grace um, as we work through this. And we have to stick together and be collaborative in all of this. Um, with that said, please do not hesitate to give me a call or send me an email. Um, if, if something's not going well or something's not working out, or even if you just have feedback that something's going really well and maybe other teachers should consider it, I would love to hear from you so that we can make sure we're supporting your student and we're making the best experience for all of our kids. Thank you.